It's probably no surprise that you can find Jesus in the books of First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. Those books that deal with the history of the kings of Israel. Uh, it should not be surprised that you can find Jesus in those books in one form or another. After all, Jesus Himself is the ultimate King of Israel. He is the King of all kings. Uh, and so it makes sense that the, the person, Jesus, who came from the lineage of King David would find his way in various forms in those books dealing with those uh, kingly forerunners of the Lord. That being said, probably the most famous prophetic statement in that series of books, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 13, or 12 and 13, is not a direct prophecy of the Messiah as it is often attributed to be. Listen to what Samuel um, says. When your days be fulfilled, you will sleep with your fathers. This is the prophet speaking to King David. And I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And if you stop right there, it sounds like, uh, it, it sounds like he is uh, speaking of the Messiah to come. In fact, when you look at the next verse, at least the very beginning of verse 14, the prophet says, I will be his father, speaking on behalf of God, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If you stop right there, you think, well, that's the Messiah. Clearly, he's talking about Jesus, the son of God. Except keep reading and you hit a snag. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. This is not predicting the Messiah. This is the prophet predicting Solomon predicting the next king of Israel in the lineage of David. And it's very important that this is being predicted considering the circumstances of David's own ascension to the throne. Remember that Saul was the first king of Israel. Saul had the throne taken away from him, and though his sons, by all other national understanding, should have inherited the throne, one of them should have become king after him, it didn't happen because God took the throne away from Saul and instead gave the, the lineage to David. So David has sinned, just like Saul had sinned. Is David going to lose his throne? The prophet comes to him and says, no, I am going to establish a lineage, a kingdom lineage that's going to continue from you to your descendant, which is Solomon. And even if Solomon commits sin, I'm still going to keep this lineage going because it's going to culminate in the Messiah. That's where you work Jesus into it. It's not a direct prophecy of Jesus. It's a prophecy of the, the royal line that culminates in Jesus. In fact, that's pretty obviously stated if you keep reading. Look at verses 15 and 16 of 2 Samuel 7. My mercy shall not depart away from him, Solomon, as I took it from Saul. You see the connection? I, uh, whom I put away before thee, David, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. The Davidic line will forever be and even as you follow the, the royal lineage of David and it gets to Zedekiah and it seems to end, and it does end, there are no more kings of Israel after that, or Judah or Israel. Still, when Jesus comes, he comes from that descending line, that, that lineal uh, genealogical line, and he himself becomes a new, greater spiritual king of Israel. Something similar happens in Isaiah chapter 7 to this, which we'll cover in Isaiah when we look at the prophets and Jesus and the prophets. But we need to be careful when we read in these prophetic words not to jump straight to Christ because sometimes we're meant to get, kind of get there in a roundabout way. So as you look at um, the, the, the books of Samuel and you see that major prophecy, think royal lineage leading to Christ and not Christ himself. As for the kings and for the chronicles uh, books, there is... A, a sort of way you can find Jesus in them, though not a direct prophecy of Jesus, you find him in the form of Elijah and Elisha, the two prophets famously written about uh, in these books. Now, I'm not saying Elijah and Elisha are pre-incarnate Jesuses, or, or that they are messianic figures of any kind. Rather, they, they do something that to that point had never been done before and would never be done again until Jesus does it, and that is raising the dead. In 1 Kings 17:17, 17, 17, uh, the Bible says, It came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. That this son of this woman written about earlier dies. His breath leaves him. That's just old Hebrew way of saying he's dead. God breathes in your life, and if you breathe your last breath, that's what death is. 
But then the prophet comes, verse 21, and stretches himself upon the child three times and cries to the Lord and says, Lord, I pray, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of the prophet. This is Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. This boy was dead. His breath had left his body. His soul had exited his shell. He was no more. And God put that soul back in through the working of the prophet Elijah. It's a fantastic miracle that had never been seen before and was suddenly seen again. It happens very quickly soon after. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. When Elisha was come to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. Elisha went in therefore and shut the door upon them and prayed to the Lord and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and eyes upon his eyes and hand upon his hands and stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child grew warmer. And then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. This is a weird text, but the, the gist of it is all that you need to know. And that is this child was dead and the prophet Elisha acted, oh, Elijah, excuse me, acted, and the child came back to life. And it happened again with the prophet Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Elisha died, and they buried him, and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood upon his feet. This cat was dead, and he's still doing miracles. Elisha was dead, and they buried him. And then here come these pirates who have a dead body. They, they toss into the tomb of Elisha, who, when the dead body touches Elisha's bones... He comes back to life. A miracle three times in the very quick proximity that had never been seen before and would never be seen again until Jesus comes onto the scene and he starts healing people and doing all kinds of things. And then he heals one person and then he heals another person. And then most famously, he heals a third person, that being uh, his friend whose name has escaped me. What's that guy's name? I'm going to edit this part out of the video. Lazarus. Heals Lazarus. So, there's your connection to Jesus in, in Solomon, Kings, and Chronicles. God bless.